Garrity and Peter Corbin are involved with a project called Smart Communities New Brunswick. The idea is to apply new technology and large-scale databases to help with collective decision-making. Our conversation ranged from seniors and their needs to public transportation to how do we make New Brunswick a better place. Hope you enjoy the conversation. So thanks for coming. Both of you are busy souls, so we have an hour to play with this notion of smart communities. Um, you want to do the quick intro first for what a smart community is, and then we'll play with some of the language and, and its potential. Sure. And Eric, do you want to go first? Or shall I no, go you first? go ahead. Okay. Um, so a lot of us have probably heard of the term smart city. Hmm. And a smart city, a lot of people would define it as using things like the Internet of Things to focus on helping with things like uh, public transit or infrastructure, mostly uh, framed around larger cities like Toronto and Tokyo and Berlin. What we're doing with smart communities, really, really focusing on people in the community and uh, work, working from the problems towards the solutions, not the other way around. So we're framing this as a smart community uses technology and big data wisely to improve the social, economic, and environmental fabric of those communities hmm. in one sentence, basically. Hmm. All right. Thoughts to add to that? Yeah, I, I, yeah Peter spot on. And what, what I can add to that is is there's a big movement right across the world. Uh, there's a lot of countries that are, are into the smart city technologies. But when we when we brought it here, we thought, well, no, it's, it's more than just the eight cities in New Brunswick. It's every community. So that's why we come up with smart smart communities. And that brings us with connections to the smaller communities and, and the bigger communities and working together because in this province we need to work with partners. Hmm. Hmm. So one thing that comes to mind right off the bat, other than the semantics, because we'll get to that later, is that New Brunswick's so small by population, 750,000 people. So you mentioned off the big cities and how they can integrate services or some sort of major data sets into better decision making. Surely to goodness, 750,000 people can find a way to integrate all of this. Is that part of the, the intent? I think it's a journey. Okay. And you don't wake up on Monday morning and say, okay, by Friday, we're going to be a smart community. Yeah. So you have to focus on different aspects of, of, of life, uh, not just in the communities, but also uh, like Eric said, in the, in the urban areas as well as the rural areas, yeah. uh, but also in different aspects of life, whether it's uh, you know social inclusion, um, new Canadians, how do we integrate uh, them better into the community, attracting new Canadians, immigration, mm -hmm. uh, energy, economic development, tourism, uh, transit uh, issues, uh, access to internet. Yeah. So all of these issues kind of come together and connect. So the question is, how can we identify opportunities uh, in various communities and what's scalable. So something can be solved in Edmonston and Miramichi, maybe can also be solved in Bathurst and Sussex and Fredericton as well, for example. Mm -hmm. So really linking them all together and in doing so, bring a lot of efficiencies uh, from a solution perspective to make them uh, more cost efficient and effective for smaller communities. Okay. At, at this point, it probably would help to have an example because that's, that's like brochure talk, which is great. It sure. Here's the big framing and stuff. Um, most of us have a list of things that we want to see better in New Brunswick. Many of the guests have come on and said, well, we need to do this better, that better. They're very good at defining the problem, um, getting at the solution sometimes. Different story. Is it, is yep. it, you know, we know what, but how becomes another challenge. Um, so is this specifically uh, IT world applied to social relationships? For lack, like, it, where's the bridge between the IT part, the smart yeah, sure. part, because that's the context you mean smart in, to all the stuff that we live with, like every day, from transportation improvements to traffic patterns to crime to how to help business community thrive. Yeah. Can you bridge? Well, yeah, yeah. there's it. You, you use the technology to bridge the social part of it, and and there's a couple of, a couple of things with that is, and just before we get into that, let's go back to what. It is the Internet of Things, but it's, we call it the smartness of everything. So everything a community, a city, a town, a village, or an LSD does, they have to be smarter today mm -hmm. and be more efficient. No doubt about it, especially in this province. We know what's up we're up against, so yeah. why can't we, as, as smart communities, work together and provide services uh, to everybody? Uh, now, uh, for example, on the transportation, mentioned transportation end is, 
is how do we get people that, that live outside our cities that have to go to doctor's appointments or legal appointments or appointments in the cities but can't access our bus service. Yep. Bus services are very expensive. I don't think there's a bus service in Canada or North America that, that pays for itself. Yep. So it's all subsidized by, by local government, yep. sometimes provincial governments. Uh, in this province, we don't have a provincial transportation policy yet. Hmm. Hopefully, we'll get that. So it's moving people that, that and to complicate that is we have a very aging population. As you know, a lot of our younger workers are, are going to where the jobs are, mm -hmm. especially out west. So that means the smaller communities, the the mean age is up to like 50 or 55. Mm -hmm. So these people are in their communities. They don't have that support. Their families are out west or in the states or yep. overseas. Yep. So how do we help them out and how do we get them into the services in the city? So. There's, there's companies out there with smaller buses, feeder buses to hit our bigger buses in the city. That puts people on our buses. That helps us on, on the bottom line, less yep. subsidization because we're, we're getting more people to use it. So it's, you know, we've, there's different things you can do there too. It's, it's a lot. We have to look at that. And that's one, one area where we, we, I think we can, we can get a gain. Uh, the other one is uh, it, when you talk about smart cities, you have your framework, and then you have sensors. And sensors collect data, data, data. So that data is collected, it's analyzed, <coughs> and if you're a politician, you, you've got better data. Yep. And what better data is, is you're more informed, you mm -hmm. make better decisions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, we could have street lights in cities. That can, instead of being a street light, they could be cameras. They can, uh, I know in some state uh, places in the States, they... They pick up gunshots. Hopefully we don't have that type of problem here. Mm -hmm. We're far from that. Yeah. But these are some of the things that can be explored. Uh, that, uh, and I think if you can, if I, I'm always a big proponent of, of keeping people safe in their neighborhood and enjoying their property. So you get mm -hmm. right down to the neighborhoods and some of this technology will, will help that social thing. Mm -hmm. Thoughts add to that? I'm starting to get a picture. Right. So that means maybe the audience is starting to get yes. a picture. So it's good because yeah. it's, it's a big picture thing. So to narrow it down to some specifics is helpful. Right. Like Eric said, I, it, you, you do have to break it down to specifics, right? So, for example, um, I was talking to a young man who is uh, doing his Ph.D. at University of New Brunswick in St. John. He's from Iran originally, and he got, he got brought to St. John to focus on urban planning. And he has been looking around the globe for really effective applications to help improve the efficiency and request for specific items for food banks. Mm -hmm. Apparently it doesn't exist. There's one in London that doesn't get used well. So what he would like to see is an application that would engage citizens and communities to actually let them know exactly what's needed when. So almost a real-time delivery of specific items or food items uh, such as, you know, socks or blankets or, or what have you. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's one example, just sort of connecting people. <coughs> there are a lot of, lot of applications like that from a connection perspective. Another example could be just for your neighborhood. There are applications out there that can, they're, they're basically like a, a private social network for your neighborhood. Hmm. So in the event, for example, of an extreme weather event, um, who's got what assets that people could use? Maybe you don't know the person three doors down. Yeah. Maybe you do, but if you don't, they may have a generator you could, you know, perhaps borrow to keep the food from, yeah. from, uh, from uh, rotting in your fridge. So a lot of examples of the neighborhood level. Um, there, there's just a couple right there. Yeah, and it, you could easily picture it could go on. You pick a topic and then go three questions deep and you'll go tuk, 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 and this is how it would work. Exactly. So, so it won't matter the topic. The process will be more interconnectivity between people. And it yes. sounds like real time, too, to an element. Um, there was a company that used to be in Fredericton a few years ago. He was working on, a, I can't remember his name now, live streaming data for hospital management over in India. Hmm. And in the whole notion of that any manager at any given time in a major hospital in India could go in, hit some buttons, and find out how many towels there were or how many syringes there were or from inventory right down to patient movement through. But it was like an instant snapshot every moment instead of um, your information's sort of older. Right. There's there's actually a company in Moncton and Fredericton, a startup, a young lady called Amanda Betts, and her company's called eHealth Chart. So her family run a couple of um, 
homes for our elderly. Mm -hmm. And she was looking for an application that would help their caregivers mm -hmm. know what's going on with their care. Like, well, is my mother, you know, is her, is her uh, medications being delivered on time? Yeah. What's her, you know, um, yep. how's her health doing? There's nothing out there she liked. So she, like, remember Leah Coca said, I was so impressed I bought the company. She, she was so not impressed. <laughs> she built a company. So she's now developed this application specifically for keeping caregivers in the loop with respect to the health care for their, for their uh, parents. One of the conversations I had with John McGarry two years ago on uh, New Brunswick health care delivery, it was just before he retired from uh, CEO of Horizon. And he talked to how New Brunswick was really well suited for regional health care model and regional health care delivery. His obstacle was an emotional one uh, that from the 60s, we have a culture here of depending on uh, my community needs to have a hospital. And the hot button issue two or three summers ago was the St. Stephen Hospital and retooling the structure of its purpose as well as aligning some services in St. Stephen or in uh, St. John. What came up through the conversation with different people after that interview was that the real solution to the next level of challenge was the transportation one. So when you talked about transportation moving people, a lot of people in St. Stephen had no problem with the hospital morphing into whatever the new iteration would be because they accepted the logic of the efficiency of the bigger hospital handling certain amount of elective surgeries. Where they were stuck was that nobody addressed their transportation problem from coming from here to going to there. So is that another example of where something like this might help build bridges and deliver uh, maybe an entrepreneurial bus service that deals with from here to here? Actually, there is a bus service now from Charlotte County to St. John. Is there? Yeah, it started up, I think, last fall. So, yeah, there is a bus service now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And there, there's, there's things like Uber out there that you know, they, they – I don't think they're really established here, so we have to look at that park and go rise. But it's these maybe these smaller services extending into the communities that somebody needs to get to their doctor, and their doctor is 50 kilometers away in a in a bigger community. If you're going to shut down your hospital, then you you have to, and you're right, you have to provide that that person a way to get to them to, yep. to their appointments, and it's 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 a necessary thing. That's what I'm saying. We have to look at the transportation, and it's going to be a regional, a provincial transportation system. So, do, do, just not there yet, but yeah, yeah. Well, it's planting the seeds right now and yeah. trying to get a conversion of a behavior, which is a whole other theme to talk about, because technology might invite us into a certain awareness, but people have to change how they've been doing things for a while, and that's another challenge. Do you have off the top of your heads what you think the four or five key areas, or two or three key areas, would be to go at first? So transportation comes up pretty quickly. Are there other areas that you know, you know, we've got this great concept, we've got to figure out uh, how to implement it, but if we can have success if we focus on these two or three areas first so people start to understand how this works. I think there are quick wins, quick wins and long-term wins as well, and I think some of them should be looked at in parallel. Okay. So, for example, we talked about, uh, you know, the top four or five issues in general that I would... I would suggest are uh, good quality internet access, especially in rural areas and mm -hmm. some urban areas. Um, resiliency in communities with respect to extreme weather events. Mm -hmm. Aging population, mm -hmm. uh, transportation, and economic development. I'd say they're the top five. Okay. And they, I think they're all related to each other. So I wouldn't say let's focus on transportation. When you say focus on transportation, uh, maybe there are transportation may be a solution to a problem you haven't asked enough questions to find out what the problem is yet yeah. where transportation could be part of the solution yeah. so for example up in Edmonston uh, they've got a booming economy up there they can't find people up there they've got a number of manufacturing co companies up there they can't find employees mm -hmm. yet and if you look around the 20 or 30 kilometer radius around Edmonston there are a lot of people that could work if they had transportation right so maybe there's a private sector solution there Perhaps. Yep. Uh, if you look at, uh, you mentioned earlier, Charlotte County and the hospital, perhaps like you said, you change the paradigm a bit and you look at how you actually help a lot of people, um, especially from an elderly uh, person uh, perspective, how do you help them uh, age in place longer, healthier and safely as well? Yep. So there are a lot of technologies today available to create what I would call a smart home for seniors. Mm -hmm. So not just physical um, things like you know door handles and non-slip floors and, and that kind of thing, but also technologies that can monitor uh, you know someone's health from a you know heart rate, 
uh, and, and activities and behaviors in the home. So perhaps there are things that can be done in a home that could actually be proactive with respect to addressing health concerns mm -hmm. that may that may reduce the amount of necessary trips to a hospital in the first place, as an example. So basically using IT to decentralize some of the more proactive uh, potential health care um, assistance. What you say complements what Karen Lake said on the show two, three weeks ago about in-home care and the use of new technologies to help the person stay at home longer. And we have to dig down. It's when you talk about a, an aging population and seniors, and we have to change the, the dialogue that's going on. And once you start changing the dialogue, you change the attitude. Yeah. So people are, you know, you, you hear, uh, oh, the silver tsunami, we're at uh, the uh, the aging, uh, we're on the cliff. The, you know, people are looking at the negative aspects. Yeah. And a lot of this stuff is not really based on anything scientific or financial. So flip that around and look at the opportunity. Yeah. Look at seeing you being an opportunity. We have a whole cohort of people retiring, yeah. young and, and the baby boomers. And as you know, Dennis, baby boomers, everything they're into always change. They yeah. want to change. Yeah. And I can tell you this, change is going to happen with how we retire. Because the more we do now, and the city has a great committee working on this, it's better for the kid born because they're going to retire that much better. Yeah. And when you look at those negative aspects, is flip that, look at the opportunities. I just came from an event uh, volunteer, uh, Fredericton, uh, we were working, our race friendly committee in the city, working with them to primetime volunteers. Mm -hmm. You might have heard about it. Mm. Is people retiring and volunteer on your own time. You, uh, there's a, an app out that was launched today. You go on the site and you pick uh, the organization, you put your particulars in, and then you have your, your choices come up. Yep. So it makes it even easier. Yep. And it's good for the volunteer associations like United Way, Alzheimer's. They can go in and they can put what their needs are. So somebody, it matches. We call it V Harmony. Yeah. So it's just, v, sure. You said V Harmony. V, yeah, v, v Harmony. Harmony. You got to be careful about that. It's have, not about dating. Don't, have, have don't slip in, with a letter there. Yeah. That's it. And have yeah. some integrity when you fill out that profile. That's yeah. Right. That's right. yeah. But it's a little hook that somebody remembers that. So they go on that site and say, well, "Listen, yep. I'd like to work. Uh, I, I get a few hours, and I wanna, I wanna, I wanna be involved with people. So I wanna get uh, Meals on Wheels." Yep. Who, by the way, does great work because yeah. when you talk about the social part, they're the connection between yeah. the outside world and the inside world. There's people that that can't get out, and they, when they go in their house, they can say oh, something's not right. So they're trained enough to say, "No, we need somebody in there to find out what's going on. Maybe it's a health thing." Or yeah, this might seem like a, a vague question, but listening between the gaps of what both of you are describing. Um, and Peter, you alluded to it earlier, like you could focus on a specific thing like transportation, but that might not be the solution to the problem. It might be a piece of it. Correct. Just like you mentioned meals and wheels. It, yeah, there's the food element, but the social element, the human contact element, exactly. yeah, all those things. So are we almost at the point yet where we can start asking a different set of questions? So instead of asking, how do we improve public transportation? How do we improve quality? You know, can we get into, are we happy? Or do we have the quality of life in the community we need? You know, those those funny, odd, yeah. touchy-feely, broad-based questions sometimes get you into the spot where all those other ones congregate. Rather than, oh, we're going to talk about food security, and then you're quickly going to find transportation and storage issues right around it. So it feels like uh, we never get off the treadmill to how to fix it. So sometimes if you pull back and ask a different kind of question, all those pieces now start to want to fit into a pattern at last. And it sounds like this technology might give us a perspective that gives us a sense of a pattern. Well, I... I you kind of get where I'm going yeah, with that? Yeah, when you say quality of life, to me, quality of life should be right in the middle of the circle. Yeah. Right? And when you talk about quality of life, I mean, there are a lot of jobs available in this city and in this province. The cost of real estate... You know, compared to say Vancouver, right. you know we can buy a home in in New Brunswick for the price of the HST and a home in Vancouver, right? It's yeah. probably three times the size. Yeah. Uh, but I would, um, I'll give you an example of quality of life. This this may seem menial, but the hotspot parking app, okay. for example, right? It's a number of cities. It's founded here in Fredericton. To me, that adds to my quality of life, because <laughs> when I park, I don't have to worry about getting a parking ticket. Yeah. Uh, I don't have to worry about schlepping around change because yeah. most people just use, you know, plastic now anyway. So to me, the feature is, yeah, you can pay for your parking uh, with with an app, yeah. 
Hmm. But the benefit is I got peace of mind when I park. And if I feel I got to, if I'm going to be there longer, I just got the little ping that says, okay, you're going to park a little longer. You say yes. So I think there's so many little aspects, not little, but a number of aspects that can contribute towards improving your quality of life. Mm -hmm. And you, I think you hit the nail on the head with respect to what these types of technologies can do uh, from a f fulfilled and, and, and happy life. Um, so yeah, I mean, there, there's so many solutions I think out there that can address little bits of your life, yeah. right? Your, your overall life, but also specific uh, things that you may do at any given point in the day. So another thought that surfaces is a uh, issue of access. Um, is this going to be something that only people that can afford it can do? Or is there a way of structuring it that it, it's actually working with organizations rather than individuals? so that the organization can help the individual? Because when you say rural access to internet, for example, that's an ongoing issue in New Brunswick for 30, 40 years. Right across the country. And, and, yeah, and, and it's a challenge, yep. and there was ExploreNet that kind of gave it a pop and stuff, but then technology keeps changing, how do you keep up with speeds, and, and it's a beast. So is it is it something that's not for the elites, but those that have access, or will it be kind of everyone will be able to access um, things that will help their quality of life in a smart community? Well, it's, 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 let's go back in time where when you talk about the internet, it's, it's a way of getting around now. Yeah. So when you go back, it was paths and, and dirt roads, and all of a sudden there was the first paved roads, and I've, I'm just reading some books on New Brunswick with some of the first paved highways. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Now we get highways and, and double lane highways, but now it's, it's, it's the, the internet. That's, you know, because... You could sit here and you could broadcast and talk to somebody yeah. three quarters of the way around the world yeah. and have the conversation. So instead of somebody jumping on a plane, coming here, hotel, at all costs, yeah. you're, you're talking. Thank you for watching. Be good. Have fun. Love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon. <laughs>